Hello fellow bibliophiles and welcome back to Blatantly Bookish. Today I want to reflect on my reading year and my channel in 2021 and chat about what I look forward to in 2022. Twenty twenty one was a strange year for me in general. It felt like it was a continuation of twenty twenty in many ways, and in my personal life, I struggled with the mental repercussions of a seemingly never ending global pandemic. I really don't want to dwell on what a difficult year it has been for me personally because I'd rather focus on my reading life this year. And certainly the one sparkling gem of 2021 was the quality of my reading. I am so grateful for the solace and comfort that reading provides me. Through books, I went on amazing adventures, made new friends, traveled through time, and dwelled in the larger ideas and themes of life. This year I had more rereads than ever, mostly due to my goal of rereading all of the Bronte sisters novels. But I also trended towards other comfort reading this year. I read two whole middle grade series, uh, Pages & Co by Anna James, as well as The Encourageable Children of Ashton Place. Both were exactly what I needed this year. They are full of wonderful, quirky characters, whimsical adventures, true escapes from the monotony of daily life. Both series have amazing literary references and a reverence for reading embedded throughout. Pages & Co especially is written for book lovers and it explores the unique magic of literature and story in all its facets. I also gravitated towards Agatha Christie this year and the comfort of her neatly packaged mysteries and detective figures who managed to work it all out in the end. And at the tail end of this year, I discovered a love for P.G. Woodhouse through his Blanding's Castle series. I previously had read some of his Jeeves and Worcester and never really got on with the characters and never really understood his writing style. but. The Blanding series is really promising and I look forward to continuing it in 2022. So yes, it has been a really spectacular reading year. I read 54 books according to Goodreads and better yet, I discovered some new favorites. I'll be posting my best of 2021 video soon, so stay tuned for that. I'll talk about a lot of books in great detail there because like I said, it was just a really wonderful reading year. This coming year in 2022, I want to let myself run wild with my reading. As much as I loved it, I also felt a bit constrained last year by the Bronte Project and all of my scheduled buddy reads. So this year I want to be spontaneous. I want to read what I want, when I want, plan less, and just let my mood reading take over. The one exception to this, of course, will be the Wolf Hall trilogy read-along with Emily from Novel Novels and Tori from Hufflepuff Discovery and many other bookish friends who have decided to take part already. I'm so excited about this read-along. It's a series I've been meaning to read for a very long time and it'll hopefully be helpful to have this whole crew of bookish friends to support me with this project. Other than that though, I really do want to give myself the freedom to read whatever I like without judgment from myself. I feel like I need that freedom this year and we'll see where my reading takes me. Usually with these reflective videos, I focus a lot more on my reading and not too much on my channel goals. This year though, I feel like I have a lot more to say about my channel than usual. One of my main goals this year, not just reading goals or channel goals, but goals in general, is to revitalize my channel. You may or may not have noticed that I've been struggling a bit with my channel this year. It's five and a half years old at this point, and it's seen me through many phases of life. I originally started it in dental school during my clinical years when I suddenly found myself with more free time to read and no one to chat about books with. And five and a half years later, I've made some amazing bookish friends who I just can't imagine my life without. They've been so supportive this year on Voxer, via text, uh, and it's just been really wonderful to chat with them and to continue those relationships. This past year, I had so many amazing video ideas that just never came to fruition, and I feel like I failed you guys. 
part of it was anxiety. Um, part of it was that I was so burnt out from work that I'd often be faced with the decision of taking time to read or taking the time to film. And reading almost always won, as it always should. And unfortunately though, sleep won out over reading sometimes too. Part of my issues this year were technical. It took me a little too long to realize that I shied away from making videos because of the editing process. It had become a nightmare. I probably should have invested in a new computer far sooner than I did. My computer was crashing repeatedly during editing. It was taking longer than ever to make videos. And I think my point of realization came when I edited the two minute Bronte poetry video. That took over five hours and I did not have more than six minutes of footage. So it was absolutely ridiculous. Making videos just wasn't fun anymore because of things like that. And I didn't want to film long videos or in-depth videos because of that. All this is to say that I finally have a new computer. It's what I'm filming on right now. I'm going back to Mac, which is what I was originally using when I started this channel. And I am so excited to revitalize my channel this year. I have so many video ideas and such excitement for this channel and this community. I just wanna thank everyone who has put up with my inconsistencies in my channel this year and who've stuck with me throughout it all. I appreciate every one of you, whether you've been watching this channel for five and a half years or have just discovered it recently. Please keep watching and please keep commenting because your feedback and enthusiasm and input are what keep me and this channel going. I still have to decide if I'm going to do a massive reading wrap up from August to December or if I should just move forward with this channel and with my reading life. Please do let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in watching a massive wrap up like that, even if it's quite belated. And if you have anything in particular that you've missed seeing on my channel lately or would like to see more of in general. Something else that I would love to do on this channel is show you my reading journals and my journaling process. Journaling has been so helpful in processing my reading this past year and has become a wonderful outlet for my artwork as well. I've been posting some of my journaling on Instagram and I've been loving Bookstagram this year. One of my goals for the coming year is to continue to have fun with my Instagram and maybe post more frequently there. It's a little weird because I only have one Instagram. It started out as my personal Instagram, and so a lot of my followers there are people who I know from other places who aren't very bookish. I've definitely been overloading them with bookish content, and I don't necessarily want to share my channel with them, but I also don't want to make a new Instagram account for bookish things. It just seems like such a hassle, and I definitely only use one account, so I doubt I'll actually change anything. But I'm definitely going to continue my reading journal in 2022, and I would like to share more of that journaling process with you. I've tried to film reading journal videos before, and I'm not sure how to do it, technically speaking. They never work out. I can't get my webcam to focus on the pages. Maybe with this new computer I could make it work. I don't know if you guys have any technical advice on how to film artwork and film journaling, I'd be very grateful because it is something that I want to make a part of my channel this year. Something else I would love to do on my channel is film some videos with my husband. I've been trying to get him to chat about books with me here for a while now, but he's been a bit shy about it. It's kind of strange to think of him as shy because I view him as so extroverted and so well-spoken that it's strange to think he would be shy and nervous to come on this channel. But he's just so wonderful and so insightful and I love so many of the bookish conversations we have together and I'd love to be able to share some of them with you. So this past year he has actually been appearing sporadically on a channel about comics. I'll link the channel down below in case you're a comic book fan or you know somebody who is, um, but hopefully I'll be able to convince him to do some videos on here with me. He reads just such a wide variety of things and has such depth in his thoughts about literature. I think you guys would absolutely love him and I just want to share him with you. So that is enough of my reflections and indulgent ramblings for one day. How was your 2021 reading year? 
Are there any reading projects that you're particularly looking forward to in 2022? Are there any channel projects that you can't wait for? Not necessarily on my channel, but in the wider booktube community. I feel like the community has grown so much that I can't possibly keep track of all of the wonderful channels and projects that are always happening. So if you know of anything that you're excited for, I'd love to hear about those channels and those projects. Please don't forget to weigh in on some of the things that I've asked you about earlier. Would you be interested in a massive belated reading wrap up from the second half of 2021? Do you have any advice on a filming setup for journaling and art? Happy holidays, happy new year everyone, and as always I look forward to seeing you in another video very soon. Bye! <music>